All right, today we're factoring using distributive property. This is what your homework's gonna look like. It's gonna say use the shared property to factor. So you take out everything you can of both of these terms. You find the greatest common factor of both these terms. What would go into 27y squared and 18y? 27y squared and 18y, think about the factors of 27 and 18. 27 is three, three, and three, right? The prime factors. 18 would be two, three, and three, right? Two and nine is 18. You break nine in. So of those, you have two threes, don't you? Three and three, because 27 is two, or three, three and three, 18 is two, three and three. You have two threes that can be used. So here you got three, three. What is the only other factor that can be used? Of y squared and y. Y. What's the greatest common factor? It is y. So there's your greatest common factor, 9y. And what you do is you show that it's been taken out of uh, 27y squared and 18y. So you write what's left, which if you took 9y out of 27y squared, you'd have 3y left. If you took 9y out of 18y, you'd have 2 left. So that is... Uh, using distributive property to factor. You're kind of undoing what's been done by factoring. Negative 4a squared b minus 8ab squared plus 2ab. We need to factor out uh, the terms of all of these. So what I would do is I just look. I've got 4, so I've got 2 and 2. 8 is 2, 2 and 2. And here is 2. So what's the greatest common factor of those? 2. two. All right. Uh, then we look at A's. I have A, 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 and A. What's the greatest common? A. A. Then B. B. It's B. Okay, you've got one B here. You've got two here and one here. So the greatest common factor there. So you've got two AB. So what you do is you take two AB out of each one of these. Negative four A squared B. When we take two AB out of it, what do you have left? 2ab, when I take out a negative 4a squared b, I'm left with negative 2a. When I take 2ab out of negative 8ab squared, I'm left with negative 4b. And when I take 2ab out of 2ab, I'm left with 1. And there's my answer. 15w minus 5v, I figure out what I can factor out. Uh, it's the only thing I take out is 3. So 15W, when I take 3 out, I'm left with 5W. When I take... All right, I... let's start over. Okay, I actually, the book makes that, five, makes that negative 3V, so that's why I got confused. Let's, so you can take 5 out of each of these. I'm left with 3W, and I'm left with V. And there's my answer. All right, this we're going to factor by grouping, and that's putting the terms... Uh, into groups and then factoring which this is already actually halfway done for you you put 4q r plus 8r into this in, into a group and then you put 3q plus 6 in a group so really it's already kind of been done for you all you have to do is put parentheses around it then you factor out uh, common factors of these two and of these two which what can i take out of 4q r and 8r Two. Four. And what? Two. I can take out R, right? What's what's left? I'm left with Q and two, right? What can I take out of 3A and six? Or that's supposed to be Q. What can I take out of 3Q and six? Three. Three. What's left? Q. Q plus... No, you factor a 3 out of 6. Plus 3. Um, It'd be 2. No. 2. Do you find Which, if you look, you have Q plus 2 and you have Q plus 2. So what we do is we combine that and just write it once. And then what we do is we combine what's in front. 4R plus 3. And there's your answer. So I have 3MP plus 15P minus 4N minus 20. I'm going to group these and then factor out the term of 
both those, so 3MP and 15P. I can take 3P out of both those. The first term I'm left with N. The, first, the next one I'm left with 5. Uh, I can take negative 4 out of negative 4 in and negative 20. I'm left with n plus 5. It, and the reason I took out negative 4 is because I needed this to be n plus 5 because I already had n plus 5. The only way I can combine them if they're the exact same thing. So n plus 5 is there. Then I combine what's on the outside, 3p and minus 4. So I, I've got 2MK minus 12M plus 42 minus 7K. I group these and this, and I factor out what I can. Uh, of the first one, I can factor 2M out. I'm left with K minus 6. Uh, and then on the other side, I can factor... What do you think I can factor out? What do you guys think? Well, I can factor out 42 and negative 7. Okay, I can factor out 7, and let's look what's left. You get 6 here, and you get minus K. Is K minus 6 and 6 minus K the same thing? No. no. So I can't factor out positive 7. Instead, what I factor out is negative 7, which would flip this and make this K minus 6. Because negative 7 out of 42 is negative 6, and then negative 7 out of negative 7k is k minus 6. All right? Everybody with me? So this is what you actually get. You factor out the negative 7, and these are the same thing. Now I can combine them, and I can combine what's out in front. And there's my answer. Okay? What this means is I had to take the 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 negative out of it okay it's they call it the additive inverse the opposite of it any questions so i've got c minus 2cd plus 8d minus 4 so i look to see what i can factor out um i'm going to go ahead and factor out c of the first one i'm left with 1 minus 2d of the second one i can factor 4 out i'm left with 2d Minus 1. That's not the same thing, is it? So instead of minus 4, or instead of taking 4 out, I have to take negative 4 out. That would leave me with 1 minus 2D. Or you can switch it and make that negative 2D plus 1. Uh, and then I combine what's out in front, C minus 4, and I combine the 1 minus 2D. Zero proc product property what you need to know if a b if a times b equals zero then a equals zero or b equals zero or both a and b equals zero so when you have something like this 2d plus 6 times 3d minus 15 equals zero you need to figure out which one makes this a true statement and it can either be this one being zero or this equals zero or both equaling zero so what I do is I take 2D plus 6 equals 0 and figure out what that is. And I take 3D minus 15 and make that equal 0. So figuring out what D is to make this a true statement. So I subtract 6 to both sides. 2D is equal to negative 6. I divide by 2. D is negative 3 for the first one. Here I add 15. I divide by 3, and D could equal 5. So my two answers, they call this the roots, because it makes this equation true, is negative 3 and 5. That's my two answers. Because if, I, if D was equal to negative 3, this would become 0, which what, it doesn't matter what's over here, because that times 0 is 0. If D was 5, this would become 0, because 15 minus 15 is 0. It doesn't matter what this becomes, because anything times 0 is 0. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. D squared equals 3C. I need to find the root of it, which means I need to make it equal to 0. So I'm going to move 3C over to, to the other side. So C squared minus 3C is equal to 0. 
Then I solve for z. What I can do is I can factor out c. I'm left with c minus 3. That equals 0. So the first c, this one, since it's on the outside, it could equal 0. And it doesn't matter what's in here, because if this is 0, it's going to equal 0, right? Then I figure out what c minus 3, is, what c needs to be if you subtract 3 from it. So I add 3. So there's my other root, 3. So c equals 0 or c equals 3. Your two answers are 0 and 3. So, and you can check your work. Plug 0 into this or, well, into here actually. If this is 0, then this will be 0. Because c times 0, or 0 times 0 is 0. 3 times 0 is 0. If you plug 3 in here, right, this would be 9, and so would this. 9 minus 9 is 0. Uh, no, no, they're not like terms. So would you do it like a coordinate? No, actually, I mean, you just write C equals zero or three. You don't write like an ordered pair. All right, here's your homework.